really, it's a waffle. You have waffles in Australia, right? <laughs> Unnatural vegan bunker prep diet for World War III and much protein. I mean, that's just a grade A title right there. So this I think kind of goes back to a video she did looking at a, another what I ate today of mine. She said that my peanut butter sandwich was like wartime food. <laughs> it's just a peanut butter sandwich. I mean, it's cheap, so I guess I see what she's saying. But yeah, that's a very, very weird uh, uh, criticism. But yeah, I guess she's sticking with the theme that my food is very uh, wartime-esque. So very uh, impoverished, cheap, not good quality, I guess, is what we're going for here. So I'm very interested. December 29, 2021. Okay, so I was pretty early in my pregnancy. I don't think I had announced anything yet. I was still dealing with some nausea and food aversion stuff at this time, so it might be a little bit weird. So today's video is going to be having a look at Unnatural Vegan's latest What I Eat in a Day. It is a short. It is a short one, which is great. 58 seconds. Shouldn't be too painful. That's an interesting Interesting start. Hey, your content sucks. I'm glad I only have to watch a minute of it. And I'm also wondering why Swayze stopped responding to me after I revealed her book um, issue. Okay, if you haven't seen the book video, um, her still selling the book when she was actually writing the book off. Freely reacts to Unnatural Vegan's email and raw food book for sale in 2019. Let's see, that video is 15 minutes long. I get, I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> it's a relatively short video. Maybe I'll watch it. I haven't owned that domain in many, many years or been selling the book. I haven't made any money on that book in many, many years, long before I made the video denouncing it, I think a few years ago. But whoever bought the domain, because I just kept everything like in the, in the, files in the hosting files because I just didn't think to delete anything. So they still had like all the fit on raw stuff up and it looked like you could buy stuff, but I don't think you could unless they were selling stuff via the links. But yeah, someone did alert me to that maybe a couple years ago. And so I emailed because you can find out who owns a domain name. It's public information. It was some random company. And so I emailed them. We're like, hey, can you like remove that stuff? please. And they never responded. But if you go to fitonraw.com now, there's nothing there. Yeah, I guess she thinks there's some uh, conspiracy or I'm a, I'm afraid to respond. No, I just didn't see that video. That's all. She suddenly stopped responding, which makes her look a little bit guilty, doesn't it? You know, we, we know that Swayze never does that. She always responds, responds, responds. But suddenly, she doesn't respond anymore. What? There's tons of stuff I don't respond to. <laughs> I started a whole series so I could respond to more critiques of me. I should probably do another one of those. Try to find a theme so they're all kind of connected. But yeah, there are like a million videos I've never responded to that are about me. So that's, that's a little weird. 12 years vegan. Well, some people may debate that status. I knew that was coming. I mean, she can't, she can't help it. She can't stand the idea that there are people who eat nothing like her, but are vegan and have been vegan as long as her, longer than her. She just, she can't take it. Um, here's what I ate today. Easy and high in protein, of course. <laughs> Gotta get that protein in, don't you? Gotta get those aminos. Yeah, it's important. Amino acids, <laughs> essential a lot of them, not all of them. They are essential amino acids. That means you need to get them from your diet. It's relatively easy to get enough amino acids eating a variety of diets, even Freely's because she eats so, so many calories. I would not be super surprised if she meets all of her amino acid needs, certainly the bare minimum, but that's one of the big issues with her diet, right? Is that you just have to eat so, so, so many calories and so, so, so much food just to like barely achieve nutrient sufficiency. <laughs> I think most of us are uh, not too interested in that. We would like to be able to eat normal amount of food and get the nutrients we need and also more variety, you know, instead of just eating fruit all day and some greens. So first I had my coffee with... What? She's got, she's got a chocolate bar. She's got coffee and a chocolate bar to break the fast. I love how shocked she always is. A lot of people start the day with like a protein bar and coffee. It's very, very common. Not many people start the day with, you know, liters of orange juice and bananas and papaya and stuff that she eats. But I, I just love how shocked she is by very, very normal food things. She's very out of touch, which is okay. It's not a crime to be out of touch. 
But when you're going to make videos responding to people and, you know, trying to influence people, I would assume, towards your way of eating, it's kind of weird to have this like, can you believe that people are eating things that lots and lots of other people eat? I guess people find that convincing, but my response is just like, oh, okay, you don't you don't know do you know people do you really just live in the jungle and not interact with other people <laughs> again totally fine if you want to do that but if you want to influence people you know sometimes it helps to meet people where they're at and to try to understand why people do the things they do and what's normal and abnormal and she always approaches things totally backwards like her way of eating is just so obvious <laughs> it's so normal really and we're like the weird ones it's uh it's an interesting approach. Hydrate yourself. I mean like you need to hydrate yourself when you wake up. Now I do usually drink water in the morning. I like never ever mention that. So that's that's my bad. I never think to mention water cuz it's water. I don't know. But it is very very important. So yeah, I'll try to I'll try to mention that from now on in my what ate todays. This is extremely dehydrating to have caffeine, to have burnt coffee beans. So this reminds me of the lamp oil thing. That's still my ultimate favorite. I was laughing about that for days. You can check out my response involving uh, Freely's fertility look at Yovana's diet. My point is that I think the burnt coffee thing is another way that she's trying to make really normal, safe foods seem unsafe and really gross, right? Like it's burnt. It's burnt coffee. Oh, olive oil. That's actually lamp oil. Like it's not a real food, you know, type of thing. Um, It's an, again, interesting strategy. Like it's not cool, but part of me like I like it. I respect it, which is not right, but I can't help it. I love it lamp oil. Now, to be fair, a lot of coffee tastes very burnt to me, but I am supposedly a super taster, so that's not too surprising. Um, my coffee is very, very sweet. My partner tasted some of my coffee the other day and was like, yep, doesn't taste like coffee. Yep, that's your coffee. <laughs> so yeah, most coffee to me is burnt. Like, I, I hate most coffees that I try. They're disgusting. But that's just because I can taste more bitter compounds, I guess, than, than other people. My tongue is like fucked up and it kind of sucks. <laughs> But yeah, the implication that it's it's burnt, it's bad for you is, is very, very funny. Also, the more important thing here is the dehydrating comment. So that was a common belief for a long time that coffee is a diuretic and so it doesn't actually count as your liquid intake. It does the opposite. It dehydrates you. We now know that that is incorrect. Coffee actually does count. Coffee and tea, they count towards your liquid intake. A uh, literal chocolate bar, right? Very bunker, very bunker food. Already starting with the bunker comments. I mean, I guess if I were creating a bunker, I would put a lot of protein bars and stuff in there. So yeah, I guess she's right. Okay, so she's got the like Splenda. She's got the fake sugar in there too. Soy milk, okay. Um, well, can't have, she's, she's so scared of sugar and fruit. It's so sad. There are lots of things you can level against me in my diet, but being afraid of sugar is not one of them. I eat so much sugar. I eat so much fruit. It's not a fear of sugar. I do like using alternative sweeteners in places because it does reduce the amount of sugar I'm taking in, particularly when it comes to something like coffee, where I actually prefer sucralose anyway. I hate just sugar and coffee. And sometimes when I make baked goods, I'll use some alternative stuff, but I'm much less afraid of sugar, I think, than even the average person. I find the evidence regarding sugar, sugar in itself being harmful, not very convincing, other than when it comes to teeth health. And that is really a good reason for me to limit sugar because I have history of uh, not great teeth health and lots of cavities. <laughs> but other than that, I really don't think sugar on its own is much of a problem. I think it's it's more like most things, it's, it's what you're eating on the whole. And sugar, because it is so calorically dense, can make it really hard to maintain your weight, right? If you are eating tons of refined sugar. But certainly when it comes to fruit, I am not at all worried about the sugar in fruit. I eat tons of fruit. I love fruit. I spend too much money on fruit. So it's just a weird thing to level at me. You know, it's all relative. And this is coming from someone who eats like primarily fruit. So to her, anything less than just a room full of fruit is like not enough fruit. Whereas if you look at some of my What I Ate Today shorts, the ones that have gotten uh, like a lot of views, I think I have one that has like half a million views. A lot of the comments are like too much sugar. I actually did a video going through a lot of those comments and just how many people were like, oh my God, I can't believe how much sugar is in this day. So again, it's all, it's all relative. 
you can't just listen to what each individual thinks about a particular diet. You need to look at the science and overall limiting refined foods is a really good idea. But if you can eat a good amount of refined foods and still get a good amount of healthy foods and still maintain a healthy weight, I don't think the evidence supports that like the sugar is really increasing your risk for cancer or any of that stuff. I think the evidence for all of that is pretty weak. It's really hard to tease out all the confounding factors there. Not saying you should eat a bunch of sugar. You probably should not. And I'm sure your doctor will tell you not to, but I like sugar. And so I eat a lot of sugar. If I had trouble maintaining my weight, which I will not be surprised if that happens, I'm getting older. Uh, probably the first thing I will do will be to start limiting refined sugar, not fruit though. And a Nugo bar, the Nugo Slim bar, is 17 grams of protein. Chop Whoa. Ah. 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 I'm sorry. I just like the whole protein focus. It's just so. Ah, what are you doing, Swayze? 12 years and you're still clueless. I just, I can't. I don't. Oh wow, 17 grams. Talk about constipation bar, right? That's not the way you want to start your day. She's going to feel like going back to bed after eating that. I'm not sure why she doesn't say. <laughs> it's freely. <laughs> she very rather, rarely says other than just not enough sugar, right? Not enough fruit. And the constipation comment, I'm not really sure. There's actually a little bit of fiber in those bars from the chicory root and a few other things. You know, it's not the only thing I, I eat in a day. I'm showing a smoothie now with bananas and whatnot in it. I eat like a lot of fiber. On average, I eat close to, if not double the RDA. I don't have any issues with constipation. <laughs> but yeah, if you're just living on protein bars, you know, you might. There's, there's a good chance you would. <laughs> among a host of other issues. <laughs> Maybe that's another thing for Freely. She can't wrap her mind around eating a variety of foods because she's been doing almost exclusively fruit for so long. So maybe without even realizing it, she's just imagining me just eating protein bars all day. <laughs> all right, we got a smoothie? Chocolate banana protein smoothie. At least there's some fruit in there, right? At least there's some fruit. More protein though. It's like every meal she has to mention protein. There is, there is something wrong here. There is something wrong. She can't believe that I'm interested in eating protein at every meal. Well, the, the standard advice is to eat a good amount of protein at every meal for satiation, for health, particularly when it comes to vegans. Like I'm not talking about eating animal protein, anything like that. But when it comes to vegans, often eating protein rich foods like beans and whatnot, those are the foods that are also richer in nutrients that we might be lower in like iron, like zinc. It makes sense to make sure you have some sort of protein source at every meal. And it doesn't have to be protein powder. It certainly doesn't have to be a protein bar. You can get all of your protein needs from healthier whole foods and whatnot if you want to do that. But yeah, the, the overwhelming consensus is that protein is important, that eating foods higher in protein is important, that eating a meal with a good amount of protein is important. So again, her like, she just can't believe it. I, well, <laughs> Well, freely, maybe read from other people, maybe read from other sources. You don't have to agree with them, but sometimes it can be really useful, again, just to know like where people are coming from. If you're trying to influence people away from eating more protein and towards more fruit, it, it might help you to know why people are doing what they're doing. Just a thought. I don't know why I'm giving her tips because I don't want people eating tons and tons of fruit. So... I'm going to shut up. Some of this cheesy edamame. I have a video on how to. I don't, I don't know. What cheesy edamame? I'm not sure what the cheese is made out of. Probably, you know, solidified oil usually. So you're having like this solid lamp oil essentially. So this is very simple. I have it in like a snacks recipe compilation video, but it's just edamame, salt, pepper, um, garlic powder, I think, and then the Violife Parmesan cheese. That's my favorite Parmesan cheese, which I can't find anymore. It's just gone. I haven't had it in like two months or something. Looking at Kroger, looking at Whole Foods, it's just gone. That's all it is. And edamame is really, really healthy. It's green soy. So it's got protein and lots of good vitamins and stuff in there. It is like just a really, really healthy 
good food to eat and it's delicious. Oh, I love it. Shit, I need to make some of that. Oh, but I can't because I don't have the Violife. Oh, God. But yeah, there's nothing healthy about Violife Parm. There's nothing healthy about virtually any of the vegan cheeses that you would buy. They're mostly just starch and oil, right? But it adds a tasty little thing to edamame. And, you know, this is another thing that I guess Freely has forgotten. Some of us eat things just because they're tasty, you know, and we like to hopefully balance out the healthy with the the tasty, right? So we're not having too much tasty stuff. So I think this is a perfect example of that. I think people get sucked into just how confident she sounds in her views, but really 99% of what she says just comes down to either really not understanding why people do the very, very simple, very obvious things they do when it comes to diet or, or, you know, maybe feigning that like shock so that it's more entertaining. I don't know. But I, I think if people maybe realize that was, that's what she's doing, she's less influential, right? It's like, why would you listen to someone who's really baffled that you would use a tasty vegan alternative cheese on edamame? Why is that baffling? And you know, that's just gonna weigh you down. It's going to line your bloodstream with that fat. It's going to interrupt the flow of the sugar, the carbohydrates into the cell. Like, basically, it's going to zap your energy, okay? You're not going to get the energy, the fuel that you really need, that clean hit. That clean hit. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. If you want a clean hit of energy, you would just want like straight sugar, right? Or straight juice that has like no fiber in it if you want to get that energy fast. But that's not necessarily what we want to do. And also the fat in the bloodstream. I have a whole video talking about oils and the really shitty reasoning that a lot of the low fat vegan plant-based doctors are using when it comes to recommending low fat and in particular like avoiding oils. So you can check that out if you're interested. But yeah, just like I don't fear sugar overall, I don't fear fat overall either. It's a really nice way to live, I have to say, when it comes to diet to not just fear macronutrients. Obviously, there's more nuance there. You know, I still believe that saturated fat should be minimized. Um, obviously, trans fat, don't eat that. Again, refined carbs, animal protein overall probably should be limited if we're just talking about diet. Obviously, if we're talking about animals, you know, don't eat animals. You need carbs, you need fat, and you need protein. So tiny. It's like, how small is this? That would not be satisfying. It's like she's portioned it out there, right? Because we know she is still restricting. She's still portion controlling because she's eating incorrectly. Even as a vegan, she's or plant-based eater, she is <laughs> eating incorrectly. So you gotta, okay, There. I don't, that's happening, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. There was a butt and I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, small portions. Yeah, it is small. That's a tiny little glass ramekin. It's kind of hard to see, you know, perspective there, but it is, it is tiny because that's all I wanted. I like when I just like a little amount of food, I like getting little ramekins and putting a little amount of food in there. I don't really portion control. Sometimes I do if it's a really high calorie meal. I mean, not right now I'm pregnant, so whoopee. But typically, yeah, there are certain things I want to portion out peanut butter. I can't eyeball a tablespoon. A tablespoon to me is like two and a half tablespoons. I can't, I can't get it right. So I do like to portion that sort of stuff. Each person is different. There are people who just never, ever have to do that. They never have to think about how much they're eating. They just maintain a healthy weight regardless. I'm still pretty lucky when it comes to that sort of stuff. But if I'm not careful, if I really just kind of eat food, even healthy food, typically my weight will start to creep up. And once it gets to a certain point, 138, 139 around there, that's when I like to start tightening things a little bit, you know, being a little bit more careful about the amount of peanut butter I'm eating, which I would say is a, a pretty reasonable response to, um, to food and to dieting. Obviously, Freely disagrees. She wants you to eat as much as possible. Obviously, a lot of intuitive eaters disagree. They want you to Oh God, I don't even want to get into that. You can check out my intuitive eating video if you want. I mean, you don't have to eat like this anymore. You can get on raw to four lifestyle. You can get on the frugivore diet and you can eat as much as you care for. This is no lie, right? You can do it. This is what I've been doing for 15 years. Which I don't think is true. I don't think she started eating the massive amounts of foods until quite a while after that. But whatever, even if she has, it's, it's one person. You know, it means very, very little. If anyone, I don't care if they have a, a dietetics degree or they're a doctor, whatever, if they are saying this is the one way 
you should eat. This is the one way that will help you achieve maximum weight loss or maximum fitness or whatever. Run away from them. They are wrong and they have a very childish view of nutrition and they have no interest in nuance. Get on the lifestyle. I've lost over 40 pounds on this lifestyle, gained a whole lot of health. I have my blood tests up. I mean, tell that to all the people who didn't do well eating her diet, you know? Tell that to all the people who have videos on YouTube saying that they gained weight or that they felt bad or that they were constantly hungry, that they constantly wanted other foods eating her way. You know, you can't just, I mean, she can, she can just ignore those people, but um, it's really not cool. And always remember that, that you're, you're more likely going to see the people who have done well on the diet. They're the ones who are going to be selling the books and making money, right? You're probably not going to hear from the people who tried it and went, oh my God, this is terrible. And then quit. Again, great source of protein. One. Ah. <laughs> okay. Take, take a, a shot of your, your smoothie every time she says protein, folks. I don't drink, but that seems a lot less fun than the traditional uh, shot game. Which is a protein waffle. <laughs> she said it again. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. That, I think that was the fourth or fifth time. So what is that now? What is what? This looks very beige. Really, it's a waffle. You have waffles in Australia, right? <laughs> very, very wartime. She's prepping for World War Three, it seems. You know, that classic wartime meal of, of waffles. <laughs> oh, there's some fruit, though. She's got to be happy about that. But it's only one. Oh, I failed again. And a clementine. Sometimes you just need a waffle. Sometimes you just need some vitamin C. And thankfully, yeah, she got some. Just yeah. a little bit, though. Just a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what her views are on vitamin C and, like, how much vitamin C we need. It's pretty awesome. You can eat, like, one orange and you're you're pretty close to meeting your needs. For dinner, some pasta. Well, that's, that's it, right? That is not a lot, okay? Pasta, right. There's not a lot of, like, uh, you know, there's a salad there. At least there's some carbohydrates. It's probably protein pasta, right? Wait, so does she think that, like, if it's protein pasta, like, it doesn't have fiber? They still, <laughs> still have a good amount of fiber because they're made from beans. Just a simple cashew-based nutritional yeast kind of cheesy sauce. Really good. With some garden strips and then... That is going to clog you up. And, you know, look, I'm always about the... Uh, the plant meats, of course, over eating actual animals, but I'm critiquing another plant eater here. So I, my expectations a little bit higher, especially after 12 years. I don't expect individuals to still be really eating um, the plant meats. I mean, OK, here and there, but she seems to eat it all the time and sometimes several times a day. That's she's like devolved so far. Devolved. Ooh, that's a that's a choice of words there. I don't think I normally eat mock meats multiple times a day. I mean, I didn't in this video. She seems to think these foods just on their own kind of clog you up. She doesn't really care about the overall diet and again, the overall amount of fiber and water I'm getting. I mean, in this meal alone, that's a good amount of fiber from the pasta and the cucumber and the tomato. But yeah, if you're just, you know, living on, on mock meats, don't do that. You're probably going to be constipated and not feel great. <laughs> and then the like plant alternatives, they're great. They don't hurt animals, but it's like a transition food, right? She didn't say transition food, but that's a common view among vegans that it's a food you eat early on and then you give up once you're used to eating more just beans and rice and vegetables and fruit or just fruit. If you're going to hold that view so strongly and actually advise people not to consume plant alternatives after a certain point, um, you should try to, you know, have some evidence why. Like, how is this actually harmful? What benefit am I really getting from switching out the garden with some lentils or something? Those are the kind of questions that a lot of people just don't seem to care about. I think they have this implicit view that they, they don't really know they have, which is just that more is is always better and is making you healthier, maybe reducing your risk even further for cancer and all this other stuff. And that's just not really how it works. There are diminishing returns, right? So if you go from a diet of virtually no fruit to a couple servings of fruit a day, that is a huge improvement in your diet. Whereas someone who's going from eating five or 10 servings of fruit, adding two additional servings of fruit 
What, what is that doing exactly? They're already getting plenty of vitamin C. They're already getting plenty of fiber. They're already getting lots of antioxidants. If you're telling someone they really should replace the garden strips with some beans, you, you believe that that is so much healthier and will like drastically improve their diet. Otherwise, why? Otherwise, why would you even recommend that? And if you do believe that, why do you believe that? Where, where is the evidence for that? then some cucumber and tomato with Italian dressing, and then BioLife Parm over everything. BioLife Farm over everything. <laughs> it sounds like fat over everything. It's BioLife Parm. There is a lot of fat because also cashew cashew dressing too. Ooh, Ooh I'm hungry. BioLife Farm. Like, I, I don't know for sure what that is, but I think it's something like cheesy. And she's not going to look because she's just not curious at all. Finally, what was... Oh, yes, we have some pineapple, some piña, but not very much. Left of the pineapple and some silk strawberry yogurt. Silk strawberry yogurt. Another tiny little serve there. She's very, very conscious of the serves because she's conscious of her weight and she always has been. It's the serving. I mean, it's what the yogurt comes in. It's the containers. It's already like pre-portioned. That's how these... Does she not know how yogurt is sold? That's how it's sold. <laughs> Such a weird criticism. And she's trying, been trying to get lean for forever. You know, like since she was raw, she didn't do it right. And now she's back to eating a very cooked, very wartime, very bunker, very World War Three diet, right? She's, she's prepping for World War Three, basically. Hey man, I'm just a planner. I'm ready. I wouldn't recommend yogurt uh, for wartime food. I'm not really familiar with the uh, apocalypse planning stuff, but I would imagine yogurt's not high up on the list. People can definitely be criticized for over portioning and whatnot. And there are certainly YouTubers who do that in their What Ate Todays. And, you know, it's kind of sad and it's not a great thing, I think, overall to recommend to people, particularly young people. I had a giant ass waffle with butter on it and syrup, probably close to 500 calories. I don't even know. So strange. And again, her, you know, she can't see from anyone else's perspective. Like, really not everyone wants to be super lean. I don't want to be super lean. My partner would be very upset if I got super lean. <laughs> a lot of men, a lot of women don't don't really find that attractive. Um, and it's very hard to maintain. The leanest I've ever been, I can't believe it, but I was 105 pounds. I think I actually got slightly under 105 pounds and that did not last. I was trying to do fruitarian 80-10-10. I would feel bad if I like gave in and ate some fucking pistachios in the middle of the day because bad food combining. You need to wait till the end of the day. And oh my God, I got like too much fat. It was horrible. And also I looked not good. Oh my gosh. There's some photos of me that I was taking because I was obsessed with my weight. And from behind, I don't know if y'all remember the Tara Reid photos of her in the bikini and her butt is like very small and like saggy looking. That's what my butt looked like. And at the time, like I didn't even, I still wanted to lose weight. I didn't even register that as like, maybe not a good look. It looks are subjective, but I don't know, man. And then I, I found one of those pictures like a few years ago and was just floored. Like, is that what I look like? Is that really what I looked like? If that isn't an eating disorder, body dysmorphia, whatever, I don't know what is. But I don't feel that way anymore. And I think that's overall pretty positive. I like that I'm not constantly constantly thinking about food and constantly thinking about my weight. I mean, I'm thinking about it more now because I'm pregnant. It's just so weird to talk about weight so much and to care so much about weight beyond just being at a, at a healthy weight, you know, being at a, a normal BMI and feeling good and having good blood pressure and all that stuff. It just feels so weird and and self-absorbed, it feels so sad. I'm not saying that she's actually sad and she's like crying inside. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I think, you know, she's obviously can stay lean and has no issue with it. So it's great for her. But for many of us, it is not fun to continually try to get so lean and to be told that here's the secret and then you try it and it doesn't work. Or maybe it helps you get lean, but only for a short amount of time. Or it helps you get lean, but you're tired and hungry and cold all the time. You remember when Freely used to wear the gloves and shit because <laughs> she was so cold? We just have different priorities. And again, I think for most of us, our priorities are very different from Freely's. A lot of us want to have babies. If I'm trying to have babies, I do not want to be that thin, not even close to that thin. That is a, a really good way to reduce your chance of being able to conceive. This is stuff that you would put in the bunker and you can eat in the year's time. Um, maybe not this one because it's refrigerated, but you know what I'm saying. You know, a lot of this stuff. Um, like this, for instance. Yeah. 
Okay, but like, who is bringing a waffle iron into the bunker? Uh, you know, priorities. Again, I don't know a whole lot about the food planning and stuff, but it seems like a waffle iron would not be high on the list. Oh, uh, well, a lot of fat in this diet. There's a lot of fat, a lot of processed, and not a lot of fresh. You know, there's some fresh in there, but we are fresh beings. Like, every single meal, every single bite, really is meant to be fresh. <laughs> it's meant to be living. Yeah, she's promoting the living food stuff. I didn't know she believed in that. What exactly is that doing for our bodies? Is it the enzyme thing? Because yeah, you, and evidence doesn't really support that at all. Those enzymes by and large are destroyed by our bodies when we eat the food. We produce our own enzymes for food digestion. Is there some just like special spiritual force? Well, I don't believe in that and I don't think she has any evidence for that. So just take that on faith, I guess. And then even the phrasing, the meant to, we're meant to eat these certain things. You know, it sounds very, uh, again, faith-based to me. Not really how I operate when it comes to nutrition or anything at all in my life. There's no excuse to really eat, um, you know, a lot of this kind of stuff, you know, when you have other options that are far, far healthier than eating this real, these very old grains sitting in a silo for years, right? I don't think I've heard the old grains criticism before. That's a new one for me. <laughs> but yeah, so there's some fruit in there, I guess. Anyway, anyway, Swayze, <laughs> good to see you there. Um, 12 years vegan, that's what she eats in a day. Always high in protein. I, I just hope she gets it soon, right? It's been so long. Like, I'm, I'm presenting the results myself over and over and over, but she still doesn't seem to get it right. Like, she just, she's just banging her head against the wall, you know. You know this is not good for your digestion. You know this is not good for weight loss, for health. I don't even know what to, to say to that, really. I mean, it's interesting. She was like, I didn't, I didn't respond to the book thing, and I always respond to things. And But has she ever really responded or explained or, or tried to understand where myself and others are coming from you know she acts like we're just ignoring her her results no we just don't care about your results freely because we don't just look at one person and go oh they're doing great well that's the diet i should eat because if we did that then th what diet would you choose because you can find any person you can find a person on any diet who is thriving and doing great and whose blood results look great. It's harder when you get into the heavy meat stuff. You know, they'll try to wiggle their way out of their cholesterol results and whatnot. You know, for the most part, their cholesterol panel is a uh, shit. You can look at lots and lots of different diets and you will find people who have done, have shown their blood work and they look super healthy and great. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know how many times I and others can say that, that we're just, we're not interested in your results freely. We're not interested in how you look. And thank God I'm not, uh, you know, seeing the light and trying this diet again while I'm pregnant. Oh my lord. That was another uh, freely review of my what a today that overall I thought was pretty good. Yeah, there's some process stuff in there, but I'm pretty happy with that, particularly, and I don't say pregnant there, so she doesn't know I'm, I'm pregnant. You know, that's not a critique of, of her, but I know I was pregnant. <laughs> anyway, there's not enough time for me to do a whole nother uh, video, but if you want me to talk about her, my book still being sold or whatever, whatever that was, uh, yeah, let me know and I'll, and I'll check it out, I guess. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Like the video. If you did, uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload. Subscribe, of course, if you want to see more stuff from me. I typically do eight videos a month, eight to 10 videos a month, something like that. And uh, if you want to support the channel, you can at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do two exclusive videos there a month for $5 plus patrons. Thanks for watching, guys. New video soon.